Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap. How does he do that? Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and I think it's fair to say that Windows laptops recently have been a bit boring. Iterative upgrades, rubbish battery life, well things are about to change. Things have changed in fact with these. Laptops powered by Snapdragon X series processors. Right now there are over a dozen Snapdragon X Plus and X Elite powered laptops with many more on the way. This is just like the first wave of this new hardware. And while I have already reviewed a couple of these on the channel, I think we need some different perspectives. So I've called in some backup for this video. Hey Tom. Thanks Tom. Hey Tom. Oh, thanks Tom. And uh, nice to you by the way. Who's that guy? At least we have my good friend Supersaf. Good friend, bit of a push there, Tom. Now, full disclosure, this video is sponsored by Snapdragon, or should I say Qualcomm, they're the ones behind the Snapdragon brand. But I can tell you now, in all honesty, that the only reason we are all making this video together is because, well, A, we're being paid, but also we are genuinely really excited about these new Snapdragon X series laptops. It is a proper game changer for the PC industry, and particularly on Windows, where we haven't had a lot of competition for a few years. It's the combination of performance, battery life, AI, including the fact that they are the first to get Windows Copilot Plus, and also just how cool and quiet they can run. It is unmatched. And we've got laptops from Asus, Acer, we've got Microsoft, we've got Dell, uh, Samsung, Lenovo, HP. Although here I have the Asus VivaBook S15, we've got the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Edge, and the Microsoft Surface Laptop 7th Edition, all powered by Snapdragon X Elite chips. I'm also really excited because I've got two new Surface Copilot Plus PCs. We've got the Surface Laptop and the Surface Pro, and these are all powered by the Snapdragon X Elite processor. I also love how super light these are, so when I'm out and about, it's almost like I'm not even carrying anything in my bag. For being so light and compact, I've also been really surprised how great the performance is. The Asus VivoBook S15. This is the first Snapdragon X Elite laptop I got hands on with right after launch and I actually got to spend a little time with this on my summer trip to Japan. And this is where I started to really witness how much of a game changer the Snapdragon X Elite processor is to Windows laptops. Me and my wife spent hours of planning our epic three week trip with the kids across Tokyo, Kyoto and Osaka and this laptop was silky smooth with that large OLED display and this was so light and thin it was perfect for traveling. So I've been using the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7X and it's been really impressive. Despite the big battery and the cooling system, the Yoga Slim 7X is still a very slim package, true to its name. And the actual performance from the Snapdragon X Elite processor is good too. I've been using the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Edge and there's a lot that I like about it. The biggest thing for me has to be the battery life. And it's also super thin and light because it doesn't need a huge battery thanks to the low power consumption of the Snapdragon X Elite compute platform. It means that I can have a laptop like the HP Omnibook, which I've been using for a while, and that is small, compact, and just looks really nice, but also have all day battery life. Now for me, and I think probably most of us, the main reason to consider buying a Snapdragon laptop right now is the battery life. To give you an example, I've got four laptops here and all but the one on the right are using Snapdragon X Elite chips, albeit different models and also with different battery sizes, but the one on the right is using AMD's brand new hardware. Now, so far, my favorite feature on both of these is the battery life. Like, it's actually kind of unbelievable. I can use them all day for all of the tasks that I need, and I never feel worried that I'm going to have to find an outlet to plug it into. I have done so many conference calls on it as well. Yeah, yeah, I mean, all day battery life. It means I can sit on my couch, play some games, head over to a coffee shop, meet some friends there, do some work. I have enough battery life to do what I need to do without actually taking my charger. What shocked me the most was the battery life, actually. The Slim 7X has a particularly large battery at 70 watt hours, and the new Snapdragon X Elite processor is super efficient, so it's been able to last all day for me. It also helps that this laptop can actually sleep properly, so when I'm not using it, it's not losing much battery. And this long battery life really helps me take advantage of this super bright screen. It's one of the better displays I've seen on a laptop, being 3K OLED, and it can also reach 1000 nits peak brightness. HDR videos look amazing on the screen, and even with the brightness maxed out, after one hour of playing this HDR video, it drained 9% battery. That's pretty good for how bright the screen is. The biggest thing for me has to be the battery life. The days of having to carry around your charger are gone. 
I can comfortably use this all day long wherever I am and not have to worry about being next to a charging port. And I also noticed that the standby time was incredible. I would close the laptop at night and almost wake up to the exact same battery life. So Windows users know exactly how big of a deal this is. And that is small, compact, and just looks really nice, but also have all day battery life. To give you a bit of context, until, well, now, I guess, uh, we've just had Intel and AMD with their chips powering laptops like this. But along came Qualcomm with their Snapdragon X series, and we've got the X Plus and the X Elite, which is the slightly higher tier of chip. And that is a system on a chip, an SoC, which includes the processor, the CPU, the GPU for the graphics, and also the MPU, the neural processing unit, along with the media engine and connectivity and all those bits and bobs. And actually, there are five models of X series chips. We've got one X Plus and four X Elite, with the X Elite boasting a 12 core CPU as well as a faster GPU. Wait, hang on, Future Tom jumping in here because I've just been told that I can share that there are maybe new models of the X series chip coming soon. We've got the one X Plus with 10 cores, we've got the four X Elites with 12 cores. Um, I think all I can say is that there is more coming, more options. But importantly, they all share the same 45 TOPS MPU. That's 45 trillion operations per second, which right now is how we kind of quantify the performance of AI on an MPU. And you can see here in the task manager, we've got a little bit of MPU action because I've got some uh, studio effects running on the webcam, but crucially, Windows requires a minimum of 40 TOPS to use their Copilot Plus features. We got 45 on here and also exclusively until later in the year. These Snapdragon laptops are the only ones to support Copilot Plus out of the box. My favorite feature has to be Co-Creator, which turns you into an artist by using your descriptive words and brushstrokes and generating masterpieces with AI. My description here is a futuristic city with high-rise buildings and flying cars. And take a look at that. The other thing I like is eye contact with Windows Studio effects. This is essentially what I do in my videos with my sunglasses, but for everyone else, you no longer have to be looking directly into the camera when you're in meetings. You could just be looking at your notes on screen and still maintain eye contact. And the new webcam studio effects are so nice. Plus the eye contact feature, it's pretty freaking cool. It actually makes it look like I'm looking at the camera when most of the time I'm either looking at myself, wondering why my hair is a mess and I'm, I'm a disaster, or just looking at everybody else that's on the call. It's definitely a game changer. The AI power is something that I'm tapping into daily and it works incredibly fast all while being super quiet. When I got home is where I really got to dig in. I downloaded DaVinci Resolve Beta to test out the 4K video editing and it's really smooth, accelerated by the built-in NPU and runs so fast, even unplugged. For me though, it's the live captions, which are the best co-pilot feature uh, as it gives you a live translation of what's on screen, whether you're on a call or watching videos. But one interesting thing is that in DaVinci Resolve, when I use the magic mask, you can see the MPU working away in the activity monitor to accelerate this AI task. It frees up the CPU and GPU to do other things, and it's also more efficient. Exactly. As Ella mentioned, having a powerful MPU locally on device like this is all about offloading tasks from the CPU or the GPU and either doing it much faster or more likely much more efficiently. A lot of this stuff can be done on the processor and graphics, but it's much more power hungry and often a lot slower, less optimized. And so while we can play around with co-creator and talk about tops all day long. Really, it's about improving efficiency and improving your battery life. Now that power and performance also helps when it comes to gaming. So it means that I can play the games I want and also have the battery life to actually game as long as I want to. Now, coupled that with Wi-Fi 7 connectivity, it means I'm getting the faster connections I need for either gaming or doing work. I've also been really surprised how great the performance is. From just doing simple tasks like writing email, working on scripts in Word, to even gaming and editing in DaVinci. It really can handle it all. You are almost getting full power not being plugged in so these might seem like small things but when all added up it really changes the user experience i'm even doing a little bit of gaming with the updated drivers and more games are becoming natively compatible so i'm all for that and to give you a couple of specifics but hopefully without boring you to death here are some of my benchmarks with the galaxy book 4 edge using the higher spec uh, x1e84-100 and you can see just how well it performs against intel's current meteor lake processors so far, so good then, but before you rush out and buy yourself a shiny new Snapdragon X series powered laptop, there is one thing to bear in mind that because this is based on ARM architecture rather than traditional x86, it means some apps won't run as well and some simply won't run at all, at least not yet. 
The good news is that the vast majority of apps do run, and when they are properly optimized for this hardware, they run exceptionally well. The majority of people I think buying one of these won't run into any issues at all, but I'm happy to say that the support has actually been very good. We've had some quite big updates and new drivers uh, that have optimized games and apps and just made them a smoother, better experience. So just something to bear in mind. So yeah, overall, this is a very well-rounded package. So if you're looking for a fast new laptop with long battery life, plenty of ports, and a big, beautiful OLED display, then this is definitely something that you need to look into. Back to you, Tom. If you've got any questions at all about these laptops, drop a comment below. Also, let me know which one you think is best. If you were gonna pick one of these up, which one would you go for? And I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.